Welcome to the One Minute Apologist. One Minute Apologist. We interview the world's leading apologists to provide credible answers to curious questions. With the resurrection, uh, what do you deem to be some of the greatest evidence for it? Well, the greatest uh, or most compelling evidence for the resurrection has to be the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. Uh, the best source that we have is in 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul quotes an ancient creed, uh, which um, likely dates to within the first few years of the Christian church, where he says that what I um, received, I pass on to you as first importance, that Christ Jesus died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, he was raised again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas and into the twelve and into more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, the some have fallen asleep, he appeared to James, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one untimely born. Um, and uh, notice that uh, he mentions Peter and James, um, whom he had met, according to Galatians 1, in Jerusalem three years after his conversion, and so that may well have been where he received that creed. It's, it's written in a very rhythmic structure, it's designed for ease of memorization, uh, which suggests it's creedal uh, origin. Uh, it uh, uses the Aramaic name for Cephas, which suggests again an early origin. And notice that he also tells the Corinthian Christians that he's already delivered this creed to them. So it implies that, that they've already received this creed from him. And he also mentions um, that um, for, he goes on to say, for I, 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 last of all, he appeared to me also as to one untimely born, for I am the least of the apostles, not even worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But with the grace of God, I am what I am, his grace towards me was not in vain. From the contrary, I would harden any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so he preached and so he believed. And so he thus says that the, um, the disciples before him, in particular Peter and James, the twelve that he's just mentioned, have already preached this message of the resurrection before him, whether then it was I or they, so we preach, so you believe. Mm. Um, and so this is as close as you can get to eyewitness testimony of the resurrection. Uh, we also have independent testimony for the resurrection appearances. For example, the appearance to the 12 is attested by Luke and uh, Luke 24, by John 20, and by Paul in verse 28 15. The appearance to Peter is uh, referenced by uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. He has appeared to Simon, it says. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 also mentions the appearance to Peter, these independent sources. Um, so we have uh, ample reason to to trust the, uh, the appearance traditions. And um, it, that suggests that we have very strong reason to think that the disciples were at least uh, sincere in believing that Jesus appeared to them because they were willing to suffer for this proclamation of the resurrection. For, um, for example, Peter was um, terrified of crucifixion. He denied the Lord three times to save his own skin. And yet, um, according to John 21, Jesus anticipates or predicts his death, and it seems unlikely that John would have attributed that prophecy to Jesus had it not happened. Clement of Rome, in uh, his visit to the Corinthian church, mentions Peter's martyrdom, um, and there's got second century sources as well. Um, James, the brother of Jesus, was um, a skeptic during Jesus' lifetime. There's good reason to think that's the case. Mark chapter 3 says that um, his family comes to take him home and save it out of his mind. John chapter 7, uh, uh, we learn that not his, even his own brothers believed in him. In John chapter 19, Jesus entrusts the care of his mother, not to James, his own brother, but to John, the son of Zebedee, um, which seems to fit with him being a skeptic king during Jesus' lifetime. And yet we know that G James became a believer very shortly after the resurrection, because in Acts chapter 1 he's portrayed as praying along with the disciples and, and with Mary and so on. And uh, 1 Corinthians 15 says he appeared to James, and we know from the book of Acts he became the leader of the Jerusalem church. Um, and so um, Flavius Josephus mentions his martyrdom in book 20 of Antiquities of the Jews, and uh, was also mentioned by Hecisippus, um, a second century historian, Christian historian, in the fifth book of his memoirs as quoted by Eusebius in Ecclesiastical History, and also is mentioned by Clement of Alexandria in the second century. So um, I like to ask a skeptic, how much would it take to convince you that your elder brother was the Yahweh of the Old Testament to the point of martyrdom, right? Um, it seems to strain credulity. Yeah. And um, the fact that, that Peter and James were willing to die for the resurrection, their belief in the resurrection, the belief that Jesus had appeared to them, suggests that they were at least that they were sincere. And then the question is, well, why did they come to sincerely believe that? And I believe the best reason, the best explanation for that is indeed the resurrection of Jesus.